welcome back to my channel if you're new here hello my name is Amy and if you celebrate Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year then I wish you a very very happy new year I hope you stay healthy I hope you have a very prosperous tiger year this year's Chinese New Year Day was a little different for me it wasn't quiet quiet we still had our gatherings although it was on zoom it is what it is and we still made the most out of it we will go through all of your questions there's actually quite a few um, but before that i would like to thank today's video sponsor thank you so much to rose forever for sending me this beautiful bouquet so as you can see i'm a big big fan of their crystal drawer bouquet because i already have two over there behind me i have a lilac one and i have a white one and i love these because they have a built-in drawer and now they actually offer it in a even larger size and a smaller size as well i store my sunglasses in that one on top and then on the bottom one i have my bracelets and my watch straps so that i can have quick access we have this cover right here which you can remove to display the roses and look at how beautiful they are i've worked with rose forever for a couple years now i think they are based in new york they were founded in 2019 they use all natural roses that are from ecuador to handcraft these beautiful bouquets it comes in many different sizes much smaller ones much larger ones it comes in velvet boxes it comes in round shape square shape even heart shape no chemicals they use all natural oils to treat these roses which allows you to preserve these up to a year or two actually the oldest one that i have i've had it for more than two years now and it's still really beautiful the red one in the velvet box if you're looking for a gift for valentine's day or for just a special occasion definitely check them out they're having their valentine's day sale which is up to 60 percent off of their bouquets and also you can even use my coupon code which allows you to save another $25 off. They do ship worldwide and also the coupon is only good for 30 days. So definitely check them out if you're interested and we're back to the Q&A portion. Just in case you didn't realize, I specifically wore this jacket for the occasion for Chinese New Year because this one is my Chanel pre-love jacket from the Paris Shanghai collection. Really suits the occasion and since I haven't had the chance to wear it, because we didn't gather so I'm wearing it in my videos now uh, the first question is from Cam Yoki if you are being offered a Birkin and a Kelly at the same time which one will you take at the end of the day I think I can't go wrong with either and also the fact that I know if I got the Birkin first I'll go after the Kelly after between the two I honestly could not go wrong right but if I were to choose just one to start off with and I know that it will take a while to even be offered a second bag then I wanted my first one to be a more easy access and more everyday style that was sort of my thought process and just because most of my bags are flat bags from Chanel and I I really do enjoy an open style bag I know a lot of you think that I'm a Kelly girl and I probably am I guess but I don't plan on getting too many Birkins, so I might as well just get that out of the way and I know I will use it. I know it's a top handle bag, I know it has a very small opening, it's not something that you would use on the crook of your arm. Realistically, I never really plan on using the Birkin 25 on the crook of my arm anyway. I know that it's a more proper handbag that is an open tote style and I just really like it. I just really... I just really like the look of it. Vivi Star, you are a real Chanel fan. What do you think about the quality and price recently? Does it turn you off sometimes? Interesting question. Um, yes, I know that we are constantly talking about prices going up and quality going down. And I don't want to... I'm just one of those people that don't really like to dwell into this whole issue but especially with Chanel their prices go up very very fast and very often but their quality is not necessarily in the same direction in fact sometimes in the opposite direction so I'm not disagreeing to that but like you said as someone who loves Chanel it's it's not really gonna deter me a hundred percent because at the end of the day 
it really depends on where you are in your collection building, right? If you want to call it that. If you're a newbie and you're starting off, then yes, it's, it, it matters which piece you end up choosing because it, it's your foundation. It, you're starting the foundation of your collection. So you don't want to buy things that are, you know, bad quality and that you're going to regret over time, I suppose. And nobody wants that whether you're a newbie or not, but I guess uh, you know, as someone who is getting into a brand, uh, it can be a very big turn off if your first piece breaks down in a year or you get whatever sort of wear and tear very quickly. I understand that. I guess I'm not in that position. I'm in a position where my collection is, uh, is good enough that I don't have to worry about that and that I'm not saying that I will just blindlessly buy things that are low quality, but I actually don't do that anyway. I always was aware that sometimes the handcraftedness is just not as on par and, you know, or maybe the material. I, I always was aware of that, but at the end of the day, I always ask myself too, like, do I like that item enough to even accept those things? And sometimes it's a yes and sometimes it's a no. So I don't really think about this issue so much. The fact that they are getting more expensive and and not necessarily the quality. I mean, I do, but I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't dwell on the issue. It's just one of those things where when you see something that you like and it feels right, then you get it. But if it doesn't feel right, then you just pass, right? I it's just as simple as that like you like it you buy it you don't then you pass judy zoo forever items to keep in your collection that you won't ever let go i believe that i will never let go of any of my hermes bags that i will uh continue to collect uh so far I only have one so um i just feel like this is just the next chapter in my life and that it's one of those things where I, I probably would never let go of Elmez bags because I choose them so carefully and you have to like, you know, get offered and build that relationship. I can't let go of my classic flap. I mean, that is a given. Like I'm, I mentioned my mini flaps, but classic flap too. I only have the one classic flap sold, of course. I think in terms of fine jewelry, I'm not ever going to really let go of any pieces unless they really just don't serve me. Like if they don't fit or anything like that, because uh, I don't have a ton of fine jewelry, so all of the pieces that I have now, they really do serve a purpose and I do wear them and rotate them often. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about the Chanel 19, your Trendy, your Coco Handles, your Lady Dior, your Gabrielle? All of those I honestly love. I don't think they're going anywhere, but at the same time, I'm very well aware that I'm, I'm, I'm about to build a... Um, my Hermes collection so I don't know how that is going to translate in terms of how much I will end up using my Chanel and that is just me speaking very frankly I just don't know right but at the same time I do love Chanel the most style stylistically their clothes their vibe and everything um, but I also appreciate Hermes so I don't think any of those that I mentioned above are gonna go anywhere anyway but there may be a chance that perhaps the Coco Handle and perhaps the Trendy are going to be similar to a Kelly once I get a Kelly. Again, I don't know that yet because I just don't, right? So um, as far as today, I will say all the classics are not going anywhere. <laughs> Karine from Montreal, if you had to choose only one rose gold fine jewelry, the Love Cartier or Hermes, which one would it be? Oh! Interesting. So I don't own the Hermes and I'm assuming you're talking about the bangle, the bracelets. So I only have the um, Gatier Love and mine is in the small size. So I believe if I only could choose one, it would be this one because so far this one has, um, has already been worth its money because I, I just don't even remove it. I've had it for... 10 months now it'll be 12 months in april so i would choose this and i think i, I think Hermes makes beautiful jewelry um and i do like 
their designs. I actually really like the Kelly bracelet and I would get it, but the Love bracelet is a very good value for what you get. And it's a very, it's a very sturdy piece, right? Like mine is the, is the thin version and it's, it's hefty even for the thin one and the price is great. So I would always, always think that this is, you know, a, a great piece not just as a starter piece, but just as a very staple piece. But with Hermes, the reason why I would choose it if I ever were to add a second bracelet is because, you know, sometimes you need to buy things at Hermes <laughs> to get offers. So uh, it would be one of the purchases that I would consider in the long term. Spencer and Jam. So you have two questions. How do I stay focused on my Chanel journey? I'm so distracted by other brands and also best throw around work bag. Best throw around work bag can be any bag, but it's it's so personal, I feel, because how flashy do you want to be? And also, uh, what kind of work are you talking about? Do you need to always carry a laptop? Because to me, all around throw around oh, Aaron's bag and could be a work bag is the never full. I mean, this is a workhorse and I don't ever have to worry about it. But I know it doesn't work for a lot of people. It's very loud, it's very monogram, and um, it's actually not great for laptops. And in fact, I don't even recommend regular luxury handbags as your laptop bags. I think you should just get a briefcase. And the briefcase can be from LV or any other luxury brands, but just get a real briefcase that is for tech accessories, basically. So, um, but your question was throw around bag, right? So I, I would still choose something like a never full tote. I heard great things about Forêt Le Page totes as well. So that is a great option if you have access to that brand. I don't. And otherwise, I honestly don't think there's anything wrong with Longchamp totes. Longchamp bags, they have quite a wide range and get yourself something that is more limited edition, maybe in a thicker canvas, because I have one that is a coated canvas and it's fantastic for traveling and all. Um, and it's just one of those things where you don't have to spend thousands, but you can spend a, a bit more than just a couple hundred to get a, a better fabric or just a more limited fabric so that you don't end up looking like everyone else. And nothing wrong with that, of course, but I'm just saying, from a point of view of you can just choose something a bit different just to be extra special. And your other question is how to not get distracted by other brands. Yeah, I know what you mean. And it usually is the trendy items, right? So for me, I get distracted by the Prada crystal bag. I get distracted by uh, the LV Nano Speedies and their colorful Almas. And uh, it's usually the more trendier sort of popular items. I think it's fun to add these other trendy bags in between seasons of or in between you achieving your next holy grail bag, you know, um, because otherwise it's so boring. Fashion would be so boring and um, I get distracted a lot. I always look around. So I mean, whether I act on them is a different story. There's two ways of looking at it. If I really am still thinking about that same item and it's a different brand than the usual that I go for, um, and I've thought about it so long, like it's been seasons after seasons, maybe even years, and I still think about the item, then I might as well just buy it and see it for myself if it works out or not. Because if I've already been lusting about this item for a long, 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 long time, even after the whole trend and the whole hype is gone and I'm still thinking about it, then I might as well just try it, right? So that's one way that I look at it. The other way that I look at it is, what's the worst that can happen if I didn't get that other item that is distracting me at the moment? Am, am I gonna feel like I really missed out? Am I, is it really FOMO speaking or can I actually sleep on it and just, you know, maybe, maybe I won't even need it. Like maybe like, and that's how you sort of pull yourself out, right? A lot of times, instead of buying it the moment you think about it, just sleep on it several days, several nights. Um, even one night is better than nothing. And see how you still feel the next day. These other distraction purchases can end up being one of your best purchases too. You just don't know until you, you know it. So 
Um, sometimes you do have to pull yourself out of your own FOMO or distraction. And sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and buy that dang thing because you've waited long enough, you've thought about long enough and obsessed about it long enough that you might as well just own it too. <laughs> KN4 and Yuyen, how long do I normally have to wait to buy a Chanel Gabrielle black bag in Melbourne? Ooh, I don't know because I don't live in Melbourne, but I think in general Chanel items, especially the very coveted uh, handbag styles are very hard to get. I honestly think that you should bug your essay, you know, like be polite about it, obviously, but let your essay know that, oh, it's one of my holy grail bags. I've been waiting so and so long already. I really hope that, you know, you can get me one the moment it comes in. Questions to ask also is, is there a new one coming? Is there one coming in anytime soon that you can sometimes see that? Uh, and if that's not the case, then ask when's the next collection? Because usually at the beginning of a new collection, these uh, timeless styles, they do come back, especially if you had to wait for the next collection to come in ask when is the next collection coming in and always remind them a little bit before the collection starts that oh please think of me once it comes in i would really really like to buy it and um sometimes and i'm not saying that you should do that but sometimes and a lot of times i do that um you might have to do a little bit of extra hustling so you might have to sometimes end up prepaying for an item before you even see it in person. Like I said, it's not ideal because if there's a defect or something that you're not happy about, then you don't know if they'll have another piece to exchange. So, you know, uh, it, it's, it's up to you if you want to risk it and you can always ask for pictures and whatnot, but it's not the same as looking at an item in person. So I'm not saying that you should do that, but that is an option. Like how, how desperate are you, right? Lizzie C, how long did you live in Montreal? Good question. I was born and raised there, so I would say that I still live most of my life there. So I uh, lived in Montreal for 29 years before I moved to Vancouver. And I'm, so yeah, I'm already in Vancouver for like 11 years now. CS2648, is the limited quantity of Chanel bags in boutique a calculated strategy strategy by the fashion house. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Look, I think uh, supply chain in general, not just the luxury um, houses, but in general, even like all the other industry is, is very problematic now. Like raw material is harder to source, more expensive to source. Is it a bad thing? I don't think so. I, I really feel like it's, it is what it is and you know if you're someone who used to buy 10 bags a year then sorry uh it's not gonna be the same for you as much anymore i mean you might still be able to get away with it since you might be a vip anyway so you might still be able to buy a lot but if you're just someone like um even like me i, I don't buy that many bags i mean i i can't imagine uh, buying that many classic flops in a year because i i think they limit mostly the classic flop especially but I'm sure they also limit the seasonal bags, but especially the classics, they don't want you to buy so many at a time. Um, that's totally fine. Like, I'm, what am I gonna buy so many classic flops for, right? So I'm okay with that. It doesn't really affect me, I feel. And so far I haven't felt like it affected me at all. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's okay. And it's definitely calculated, yeah. I've, you have to move with the times, right? Lux Doc Lee, hi. If you were only allowed one purchase a year, what would it be or fashion house? Ooh. <laughs> oh, these hard questions. Okay. Um, I'm guessing you mean bags, right? Like one bag purchase a year. Then it would have to be Hermes because in my current situation, I have a healthy Chanel collection already. I mean, I will always end up adding here and there too, like depending on what season, uh, what they have, something special. Um, but I don't have an extensive Hermes collection. In fact, I just started, right? So I will say Hermes for sure. Yeah. 
And that is already the case because in because not only are are they like switching to a global quota system, aren't they? Right? That's what the rumor is. But it's already like that in Canada. In Canada, you can't really get more than one bag a year. In fact, usually you have to end up waiting longer than a year for each bag. So it's already like that here. Sure loves Louis. Do you feel like you are buying Hermes items? You do not care so that you can qualify for a Birkin? Ooh, interesting question. Why would you think that? Um, well, I mean, I can, I can see why, but why would you think that I would do that though? Because look, I'm not disagreeing at the fact that if I didn't have to do this to get a quota bag that I would really voluntarily go to Hermes and buy a bunch of things. I'm not disagreeing with that. However, I don't believe that I have ever bought anything that I don't think I will like. So, um, I mean, just to give an example, is there anything that I don't like that I bought from Hermes because I'm building this, this, you know, quota? Um, not really. I mean, they can be less used, but that happens to my Chanel items too, or any, it can happen to any item. So it, it has nothing to really do with the fact that I'm just buying blind, like mindlessly just to achieve a quota bag. I don't do that. I always think about whether I have a use for that item and if I like it. And I almost wonder if maybe some people don't understand that because you're not in it. And probably that is why, because if you're in it, you wouldn't be asking this question. I honestly think so. I honestly feel like I, w I would be asking that question to myself if I wasn't in it, I guess, to, to be fair. Um, but once you're in it, and those are the things that you have to do, then you do your best at picking and choosing things that make sense for you, that you can still benefit from, and you can still achieve the goal at the end. And I think the best analogy I can use, even though it's not really related at all, but just think of your diet, right? Obviously, it's very healthy, and it's recommended that you eat eight to nine cups of vegetables per day. But nobody in their right mind, if they can choose, would want to do that. In fact, you would rather eat chocolates or fried chicken or beer or wine or cheese all day long if you could, right? If that's what you can do to stay alive and healthy, you would just, you would just eat your favorite foods all the time. But of course it doesn't work that way. You have to eat a balanced diet and you have to make sure to incorporate your veggies because it is the most nutrient dense food out there that will provide all your minerals and phyto <laughs> phytonutrients that you wouldn't get elsewhere. So it's sort of like, you know, it's good for you, so you have to do it, but it's not something that you love the most but you have to do it in order to, to achieve a healthy life. So it's almost the same thing. I honestly think it's almost the same thing. It's sort of like Hermes wants customers that not only just want their bag, but they want them to appreciate their overall branding and everything else that they have to offer. So if that's not something that you want to do, then their bags are not for you anyway, right? So uh, of course there's always a resale market and whatnot, but um, you end up paying the same thing. The, the resale market, you pay a premium just to get the bag right away and faster and exactly what you want. And for a lot of people that makes total sense. For me, it could make sense too, but I actually enjoy everything else I buy. So I will say no to your answer, actually. I. I um, I don't just buy for things that I don't care so that I qualify for the bag. I will say no, no, that is absolutely not what I do. Oksana, hi babe. Um, what's the best and worst part of being on YouTube? There's so many best parts actually and well, so many bad parts, but let's just, okay, let's just get the bad parts out of the way. The bad parts is that um, 
you get judged by a lot of people that that just that just judge you by your cover because basically you put yourself out there and they uh, and these people that judge you uh, of course there are two types of people I think there are people who are really thoughtful and and maybe they give you their criticism but only so that you can benefit from it so that you can improve from it I think those are legitimate people that judge you and they are just trying to help you whereas the other group is well it, it comprises everyone else right the the trolls for no reason they they're not they don't have any accountability or responsibility behind their words they can just say anything they want just because they needed you to hear it or they just don't like the way you look or they just don't like that you're spending your money or that um <laughs> or maybe they're just jealous i don't know i cannot ever understand these people because i'm not them and you can't reason with the unreasonable so forget about that <laughs> so i guess that's the worst part of being on youtube is that you get uh, a lot of criticism and sometimes they're not even criticism they're just complete things that you can ignore because they're just complete trash and nonsense um, but it, it hurts, right? Because you're a human being. We're all human beings. We have feelings and it still affects you. It ruins your mood. So that's probably the worst part. But the best part, wow, there are so many. I think the best part is that I have met so many wonderful people here on YouTube. I, I mean, just to give you an example, I met Kat not only in person, but we're partners now. I met Clara. Also, not only in person, but we we're friends, and uh, I, I made so many friends. Amy, Joe, uh, I met, I made so many friends. Even you, Oksana, um, online, and some of them I happen to see them in person and and hang out with them in person, which is amazing. And I think that is a very special connection. And not only just YouTubers, I have met so many actual just viewers that are just so amazing people they are so thoughtful and very nice and it's just so easy and so pleasant to interact with them it's just like friends that you would never have ever encountered otherwise and the beauty is that you don't even have to like exactly the same thing but as long as you have some sort of common interest and that you have mutual respect just because because you do because you are i don't know you just like each other for being who they are right so um i think that is the most rewarding of being on youtube but you know of course there's many many things i i get to work with many brands that i would otherwise never have it's very rewarding just from the interpersonal perspective but it's also a very fun and um challenging in a good way challenging journey because um being on a platform online and creating content it honestly is not easy because I honestly dare you all to try it and you know some of you will be very skilled and be very natural at it but a lot of you will realize how hard it is and I think it's one of those things where you get better at if you're really serious about it and that's how I felt like I could never imagine my channel to be uh, anything uh, and now I feel like I'm comfortable at least from a point of view of putting myself out there and be unapologetic about it um, or as unapologetic as I can be because I'm a, I'm a person who worries a lot and I <laughs> I wouldn't have done these I, I, let's just say that I am a very different person back then when I was younger and so I feel like from all aspects of my own personal growing is is, is that I grew a lot just by being out there, just by putting myself out there and just by, um, yeah, just, just by challenging myself. So yeah, lots of good things, honestly, but I'm sure you feel the same way. I'm sure you do. Bag du jour, will you reach purse piece after your broken and Kelly? Ooh, interesting question. I 
think I would be closer to a back piece. Um, look, we don't really know what's the next best thing, right? We, we don't really know. Like, think 10, 15, 20 years from now. We don't know what's the next best thing. Of course, at the moment and for the foreseeable future, for the next five years, I think I will be on this journey of of curating my Almaz collection and and it's it's very it it's something that I'm really looking forward to. It's at the same time very um gives me anxiety because you're always, you know, wondering oh when and how and which but it also is something that you just have to embrace because if that's what you decided to do for yourself, then you just just have to go for it, right? So I will, I, I think that I will have reached purse piece, but only for that moment. And then what's the next thing, right? You always have to look forward to something better to do. And it, it may be purse piece because maybe the next best thing that I can do instead at that point for myself is not so materialistic, but more in terms of experiences, maybe it's about traveling, maybe it's about my next big financial goal, it can be anything. So um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I will think I will say that it, it's probably closer for sure. But I will never ever stop buying bags, I think, or sh or fashion things like clothes, jewelry, whatever. I'm always going to be interested. Virginia Du. Hi, Amy, what is your second Hermes bag wish list? Ooh, yeah, so if you haven't seen my wish list, I will link it right here. I did update you guys what is my second bag wish list, but um, I don't know how specific I can be right now because I don't really know what I should shoot for yet. I think when I decided that I wanted my Birkin 25, I was pretty specific about that size and even color I wasn't, I wasn't specific. I had a few colors I wanted, just nothing crazy. So I would think that for my next bag, it would for sure be a Kelly, but it's just the size I'm not sure. Actually, I am sure which size I want, but I don't know if I can get it because I you, you always hear that, oh, mini Kellys are so hard to get, or maybe it's a very large pre-spin, or maybe it's just you have to wait a long time because there's not enough to go around. So I... I want to be strategic. I want to still get a next bag, not too long, but at the same time, um, I want to get exactly what I want. So I, I honestly would be happy with a 25 Kelly Cellier or Mini Kelly. I think practically speaking, I would have more of a use for a Mini Kelly because I'm a nano girl. I, I, I am, I just am. And honestly, I love wearing a nano bag and a larger bag. Thoughts on Hermes, SLGs, etc., uh, like card holders, and for yellow gold ring, Chanel Coco Crush, or the Cartier Love. I um, honestly think that I'm not attracted to the Love ring, and maybe it has more to do with the shape of my hands or just the aesthetic that I'm going for. Look, I have nothing against this bracelet this is the love bracelet in the slim and i think it's amazing as like i said earlier as a as a staple piece i i just think it's it's great but for rings i don't particularly like this look like which is very simple just like the nail design on a ring i feel like with rings you can just really um you can just really experiment and have you know, different designs on your fingers. And maybe because I'm more personal with my rings, with my bracelet, I, first of all, I didn't know if I would like a bracelet all the time before. So this was sort of like a test piece, but of course I end up loving it. And I think it's just great value for what you get. Um, for rings, I would tend to choose the Coco Crush. I think the Coco Crush design is so much more interesting and so much more feminine and um, just pleasant to look at. And I have tried it, so. Uh, it is part of my wish list, which is why uh, I would favor the Coco Crush. Thoughts on Hermes SLG? I don't have a ton of SLGs, even in general, not just Hermes. The only SLG I have is the Bastia coin purse, and I think it's well made. Um, SLGs are just, for me, a very utility item. It's It doesn't 
to me, it doesn't bring out fashion. Like it doesn't show how your personality is. It doesn't show how how you how you、uh, want to style yourself. So for me, SLGs are very utility, very functional. I will say that Hermes SLGs are so simplistic, and I feel like their SLGs are even more simplistic than the look of their bags. Their bags can still be interesting and have quite a bit of detail, but their SLGs are so simple, like so clean and minimal, that you have to want that aesthetic for yourself. Like you want to be so minimal with it. I am less attracted to that for for whatever reason. I just prefer my SLGs. As little as I buy them to be pretty, so I actually really like Chanel card holders. Even LV SLGs are nicer, like nicer, prettier, prettier.、Um, but to each their own.、Like、Overjoyed, Hydro. What are your thoughts on the Chloe Woody tote? Is it too trendy? I will say that it is too trendy. But with all things too trendy, I mean, how obsessed are you about it, right? Like. What kind of needs do you have for it? Probably saw it on multiple influencers who carried it recently, and maybe it's the next cute tote to own. Is it because of that reason, or maybe you have a very specific need for it? Maybe it's for carrying your、uh, little daughter's things around when it, wherever you go. Like it can be a very specific reason that you want it, and it happens to be trendy. So get it, but I will say that for me, I tend to refrain from such big logo、um, totes unless it's my favorite brand. I am still loving the Chanel Deauville because I am a Chanel girl. But aside from the Deauville, I will probably refrain from getting any other brands' big logo totes because they. No, they are nice, but they are trendy. And if it's not my favorite brand, then I will probably fall out of love with it in a year or two years' time. And if that's okay with you, you can get it. Maybe just use it for the meantime until you're tired of it or until it falls apart. Then at least you would have had fun with it. But you can still be trendy, right? So、uh, I think it's too trendy, but it's cute. I really like the construction. I like the thicker strap. I like the logo. I like the the simple canvas. Last question by X O J J B. Tell us about your kiddos. Love your luxury life shows. Never miss it. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have kiddos. I have a kiddo, and um, what is there to talk about? I don't know. I mean, she's. She's already a teenager. She's fourteen, and she has her own thing going on. You know, it's the age where they have a lot of their own thought process and desires and choices that you, as a parent or or elderly, can't really influence them as much anymore, right? They have very strong. What they want to do now. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up this. Q and A. Thank you all so much for your questions. Very lovely, and I hope it's、uh, a fun way of starting off the year, well, the new year, the Chinese New Year. So, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, I would love to have you back. So, please don't forget to subscribe. And in fact, you can support me and or Cat further by becoming our channel members because we do have. More exclusive contents just for members. Thanks again. Have a great week ahead of you, and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.